Hello, I'm Greg Lamb with the Slater Group. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of QuickBooks Online, which I'll refer to as QBO. Now, while QBO has been around for over a decade, there were changes in 2013 to revamp and reposition it. So in this first of two videos, I'll show you around QBO, give you a feel for its basic functionality, and introduce you to its banking page. In the second video, I'll cover invoicing, billing, payments, the important export of data, add-ons, and reports. Since QBO has different versions and localizations available, I should let you know that I'm reviewing the Plus version, localized for the United States. This will run you $39.95 a month. But before I get started, let me position QBO a bit in the space of online accounting software. While the QuickBooks name reigned king in the desktop world, online it's not so sure whether or not they'll keep the crown. Right now, QBO has about a half million users, most located in the United States. That makes them easily the number one online accountant software in the United States. But on a global basis, they are being challenged by companies like Xero, Wave, FreshBooks, Zoho Books, and Cashew. Xero is their closest competitor in terms of functionality. And while Xero's US customers are in the tens of thousands, their global user base is currently hovering around 300,000. More importantly, Xero has developed a robust ecosystem of add-ons, numbering around 300, QBO's add-on numbers currently hover around 50. I think it's pressure from companies like Xero that's motivated QuickBooks to take their online offerings more seriously. Whatever the reason, I'm happy with the positive changes made to QBO in the past year. Something I always check when evaluating online accounting software is whether it has accounting basics, like accrual accounting, good control over the chart of accounts, and the ability to create journal entries. I can safely say that accountants and bookkeepers will be satisfied that QBO does have the basics. For small business owners, this means that QBO can accurately report your profit and loss, so how much your company makes. It can also produce a balance sheet, which is your company's worth and how it achieved that worth. It's all the functionality beyond these basics that I'll be discussing today. If you haven't recently used QuickBooks Online, or have only used the desktop versions of QuickBooks, which by the way is a different product, even though they share the QuickBooks name, the interface will be new to you. Let's start with the home page. It gives you a summary of your income expenses and your profit and loss. Now what I like about this page is that you can mouse over items to get more details. And if you click on them, you'll be brought to the appropriate list view or report with even more details. There's a few ways to navigate around. You can get to the main areas of QBO by using the navigation menu on the left. And if you click on transactions, you'll see a further submenu item as well, just so you know. But a navigation item I really like is the Create menu. It's the plus symbol right here. If you click on it, it'll reveal the most common types of transactions you can create. I like the Show More view, as it shows me many more transaction types I can create. What this Create menu does is allow you to access the majority of transaction types in two clicks. This really speeds up navigation. To the left of the Create menu is the Search menu. You can search all transactions. It's a global search. For example, I can type in $100 and find all transactions that equal this amount. What I really enjoy about QBO search though, is a way you can refine the search parameters. So I can make this search look for all transactions over $100. And furthermore, I can only search expense transactions. Now to the right of the create menu is the activities menu. This simply lists all your recent transactions. The next menu is the settings menu, which is off to the right. I think it's good on the side like this, since you won't be using it as much as more prominently placed ones, like the Create menu. The last menu on the right is the Help menu. Type in something into the box will search both QBO's support site as well as its community site. Overall, the answers were okay, but I found the results were too heavily weighed on returning community site answers instead of official support site articles. For example, if I type in Reconciliation and Search, the results are mostly answers found in the community site, I'd much prefer to see official support articles first. I spent time quickly covering how the navigation works because I think it's a vast improvement over QuickBooks Online's previous version. I find QBO is now faster to get around and overall nicer to look at. Some users of the older version of QuickBooks Online have not liked this new version, but I feel that if you took a poll of new users and showed them the old version and then compared it to the new version, the majority would pick the new QuickBooks Online. Now, let's move on to things more relevant to the small business owner, like the banking page. This can be found by clicking on Transactions and then clicking on Banking. 
Like all online accounting software, QBO is able to automatically import bank and credit card transactions via bank feed. And if a feed is not available, you can upload a file containing your transactions. You'll see those imported transactions in the New Transactions tab. This is a quick rundown of how it works. If the transactions have a match, you'll see the QB icon and match, like here. QBO will try and guess the non-matching transactions, like here. And if it can't figure out how to categorize it, it'll be categorized as uncategorized expense or uncategorized income. Since transactions won't always be perfect, you'll need to change them. To do that, all you need to do is click on one. This expense is uncategorized, so we can categorize it by choosing a category from the drop-down box. For example, this could be an equipment rental expense. To finish up, we click on Add. So that's the basics of how you process imported transactions in QBO, but it's getting into the details that reveal the pros and cons of this page. For starters, QBO won't get matches right all the time. If you click on a matched transaction, you can see how the transaction was matched and other possible matches. You can also click on Find Other Matching Transactions to further refine your search. I like this built-in flexibility. I also like how you can make adjustments to deposits. However, you can only make positive adjustments. So if you have something like a bank fee you want to account for, which would require inputting a negative value, you'd have to do this from the Bank Deposits page. A tool that I find handy is Batch Actions. Say you agree with QBO's matching and categorizations for a bunch of transactions. Instead of individually clicking on each one, you can use the Batch Actions feature. All you need to do is click on one transaction, hold Shift, and click on another transaction. All transactions between them will be selected. You can then click on Batch Actions and choose Accept Selected. Voila! A whole bunch of transactions accepted. Another feature I enjoy is using the header to sort the transactions. For example, if I click on Description, it'll sort it by Description. And if I click on Spent, it'll categorize the transactions by the spent amount. Now in case you didn't notice, there's a couple other tabs in the banking page. Let's go over to the In QuickBooks tab. This is where transactions from the New Transactions tab move to when accepted. There's a couple things I like about this tab. One, you can drill down into any of the transactions by clicking on the link. As you can see, the transaction pops up. And when you close it, you're still in the In QuickBooks tab. Secondly, you can easily undo any transaction with the Undo button. So, it's easy to revert a transaction that was mistakenly accepted. Let's move on over to the Excluded tab. I like this tab as well, since it shows me transactions I didn't enter into QBO. Maybe because they were duplicates or something. But if I incorrectly excluded a transaction, getting it back into the New Transactions tab is as easy as clicking on Undo. In general, I like the banking page, but here's a quick summary of improvements I believe would help. The ability to use sales taxes. The ability to use negative amounts in forms. The expansion of the Categorize Selected Batch Action, so you could do more than select a category. It would be great to have the ability to select details, such as payee, memo, and even line items. Probably the biggest improvement I can think of is if QBO allowed users to control the rules used to categorize transactions. Zero and Zoho Books allows this, and this leads to less data entry and more accurate results. Alright, this concludes part one of my review of QuickBooks Online. In part two, I'll be discussing the customer and vendor pages, reports, getting data in and out, add-ons, and give a summary of what I think about QBO.